Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you this bike. I'm going to start removing, trying to figure out what is wrong with it. I know pretty much that the battery is dead, but I don't see a lot of people on YouTube taking these old bikes and really giving an in-depth um, explanation of things. And I don't know anything, so I'm going to learn along with you guys on this project. This is probably the the most difficult project I'll ever tackle, so it'll be very interesting. I've been very interested in getting an electric bike, but they're very expensive. And I have been thinking about making my own electric bike. Now I have this Zero FX XU, and the battery is dead, so maybe that's a good starting ground to build my own. So this is a 2011 FX. And back in the day, this thing cost $8,000. But get this, even when it was brand new, this baby could only go 25 miles. I'm not really sure who would buy it. It was just a very expensive toy for rich people. But nowadays, these, like this one, is a free bike. You can get these left and right on the marketplace for a couple of grand, a thousand or two. But it seems that you're gonna be spending quite a bit of money getting this battery. So there's a couple of options that we'll talk about later when it comes to batteries. So I'm just gonna take you through the bike and just look at it as, it's, as it sits right now. 19 inch front wheel and it's got a single rotor. This bike is extremely light. I think it barely gets to 220 pounds and you feel it. You got upside down forks. They seem to be in decent shape. There's been some rash here and there. I don't really care about that. The forks look to be pretty decent. They're fast ace performance, I don't know what that means. But it's got all the lights and everything to get ready. And this lost some tire pressure and I put the air on it and it's holding. But it does have some dry rot. You definitely can't really ride too much on them. So we're gonna have to change the tires. This has got a plastic that covers the controller. The charge controller is here. If you look at this, it's a three-prong charger that you would have on a PC or a computer monitor. That's how you charge it. And this is all going to be coming out. All of that's going to be coming out. It's actually missing on the left side. This is the main battery. This is the connector for the battery, I guess, or for the controller that goes here. It powers the battery, whatever. Another interesting thing is that there's this... It's the... Um, type of connectors that you would find in a car. So this is the connector that I would use for reading error codes on a, on a car. And this connector will fit right on here. But of course, you get no reading whatsoever. Now I'm gonna unplug the controller. We're gonna need a new rear master cylinder. This is one giant sprocket. The chain is a bit rusty. I'm not sure if I'll reuse it but I do have a chain. The chain on this is smaller than a 520 so I would need to buy a new one and of course the swing arm it's very lightweight everything about this bike is lightweight. Monoshock and it is busted it in transportation it just threw all the fluid onto this tiny little fender. Calipers were off you can tell you know there's a quite a bit of rust. This is a very odd size of rear tire. It's a 16. I think the last time I've seen the 16 was on a Ninja 250. The old and right here you have a motor and hopefully this is not busted but I have seen other types of motors that we could get to fit in here. You have very decent handlebars. I'm very tempted to take these and put them on my Honda Goldwing. Like we have to remove the seat first. Learning things all the time. So a six millimeter on one side. The six millimeter here. Man, this thing is just rusted out. There we go. Yeah, it was just super rusty. Seat is very lightweight. There we go. There we go. Now this should pop out. These little plastic rivet. All right. All right. There's a little bit more scratches. No one will ever be able to tell. Here we have quite a bit of stuff. 
We have the horn. We have some sort of relay. This looks like a headlight relay. I don't know. It looks a lot cleaner than most motorcycles. This is what I wanted to show you. If I take the plug and I put it on the controller, by the way, a horrible placement for this, you know, could possibly hit the wheel. You put in your charger and look what happens. It does go on. So we have lights and it cycles through this, stays on the charge thing, like it's close to empty. If it was blinking on the other one, it would be uh, full. So I don't know what that means. It, but it can't be good. So I'm not going to even try and charge it. I'm just going to unplug it, put it away. So now we have to figure out how to remove this. Well, we're going to remove this bolt. It's a 13 millimeter. It's already kind of loose. Usually I like to use these, but I don't have <clears throat> the wrench. I have it. Just can't find it. The bikes were meant to you would swap that out. So you would take this on a trail or whatever. It's a super motor style, so you would take it on the track, you would ride, and you would swap with another bike or another battery. Problem is, these batteries were expensive, so who was buying an $8,000 bike and riding this for 25 miles and then putting in another $3,000 battery? I don't think Zero thought about this too well this is kind of popping up. There we go. And, oh, I guess it's this uh, foam that was kind of sticking to the battery. Damn, this is seeing better days. Look how dirty this thing is. It was already loose, so I'm assuming that somebody was tinkering with it. There, there's the bracket. You know, I do have to shout out, give, sh uh, some props to Zero for using lightweight, high quality frame material. So it looks nice, very lightweight. I mean, I kind of like it. This, which is the connector, and then this that goes here. There's also a breaker of some kind here. This has got a lever here, some sort of, um, I think it's like a, a safety thing. I don't know. The battery is completely dead. That's why I'm not that worried. Oh, I see. This kind of pulls it back. Okay, so this kind of pulls that. There we go. So, this thing, that's all it does. It helps you pull this thing back. Oh my god, look at this. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this thing, that's the connector. Very dirty. There we go. Look at this brick. Guess you have to grab it down here and pull it out. Look at that. It should weigh about 40 pounds. Yeah, not bad. And there we go. Air, check. Spark, check. Fuel, none. So, the way you work this is very non-linear. At least for me, you have to be almost like an electrical engineer to figure out all of this stuff. But I think that's pretty much what I'm going to do today people use this box and they fit in another battery but you know honestly like I kind of wish I, I had a little bit more juice the thing that they're saying is to use Nissan Leaf batteries and put it on the bike seven of them and you can use the controller all the electrics the motor you don't have to change anything folks that's the motor right there I have no idea if it works this part looks new the motor does not look new I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing, guys. Um, if you've done this on a bike, post up in the comments below what I've seen people do. Yeah, look at it. It's so light. Pretty much how you remove the battery from a Zero FX 2011. Next up is opening up that battery box, poking around. I don't think there's anything we can really do with it as far as power. So we're kind of stuck with figuring out what is our next steps. And I think my next step is to order the Nissan Leaf batteries, but I have um, I'm not really researched it as much as I want. So I'm gonna research it a little bit better. Uh, if you know what I should be doing, post up in the comments. Like this is all new for me. 
I would be disappointed if I only got 25 miles range on this, but it's still better than nothing. I just don't want to spend a lot of money. A lot of the big YouTubers, there's no, you know, there's no problem with money, but for me, I have to keep it a little bit simple. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and make sure you hit like and subscribe to all the other motor vloggers out there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.